It's time to leave Singapore again and settle into a deeper, wider flatbed on an A380 just so I can check out the famous Singapore Airlines catering and today it's cheeseburger time. All washed down with the finest vineyards known to humanity, or at least the Lion City, after some breakfast cocktails in the lounge. I'm here to check out what Singapore Airlines have done to their A380. Now they've almost completely revamped them inside and the new Terminal 3 lounge. Now it's been completed after a year long makeover. Yep, that's where I am at five in the morning, having arrived off the overnight from Brisbane on the smaller, narrower regional A350. The lack of sleep meant I was all over the place like a giraffe on ice skates, but Talking of ice, it made me think of gin, and I never drink anything stronger than gin before breakfast. Now the lovely comfortable lounge improved matters. It's a core hub lounge for Singapore Airlines. The Silver Crisp Business Lounge at Terminal 3, of course, trumps a gold lounge next door in Singapore Airlines parlance, where a Silver Crisp means business, gold is just a frequent flyer level. The lounge features four separate seating sections, including pods for working, an extensive self-service buffet, and a 24-hour-a-day cocktail bar with bartender attached. Still, it's time for breakfast now. A full-cooked English is available, as is the DIY Bloody Mary. My body clock was telling me it was a time to be a legend in my own lunchtime, particularly as the other breakfast options in the Silver Chris Lounge were pretty much fruit or cereal. Had an after breakfast Baileys, the lounge caters for those with wildly differing food times and was offering lunchtime salads. And then it got around to 6 in the morning when the cocktail bar was doing a roaring trade. Very popular with breakfast noodles and curry in Singapore in the morning. If that is, morning is what you go into when the beer runs out. Now, I've been awake for nearly 60 hours, so I thought I'd tackle it in the morning, except the bar staff pointed out it really is now the morning. Yesterday was spent flying up from the Sunshine State, checking out the quite small regional lounge in Brisbane, having a fantastic steak on board, and then squeezing into the seat. I'll compare and contrast it for you in just a moment, but as you can see, it takes most of the features of the a 380 seat and then really squeezes it into a much, much smaller package. Still got the same facilities and there's still a lie flat bed, but it's tiny. Well, that was a pleasant short hop on the Singapore Airlines A350 900 series through to Singapore. Tomorrow morning, I've got the A380 through to London Heathrow. But right now, more importantly, I've got a pint, and I've got a swimming pool on the roof of Singapore Airport. Then I caught a few hours kip in the Airport Transit Hotel. Three hours shut-eye and back to the lounge. Divided into two halves, it's well worthwhile having a wander around both. Right after reception is a main cocktail bar with great airport views and natural light. Turning left finds the main food area and two vast relaxing rooms beyond. There's decent champers in buckets, a Silver Chris Poo at the moment is Tattinger. Now Silver Chris is named after the Chris, a Malay weapon used in the 14th century. The Chris possessed many qualities, the greatest of which was its ability to anticipate danger and protect its owner. So to protect myself, I worked my way through the cocktail list with a Singapore sling, which got me into the mood for Singapore breakfast noodles. Now with my body clock running on mid-afternoon time, I did wonder if I was having a stroke or wandered into another multiverse. The wonders of the lounge to discover, but not for too much longer, it was time to board. And after a couple of hours sleep, here we are in the Singapore Airlines Everest Flyer Business Class Lounge, about to board our E380 off to London Heathrow at breakfast time.
But just at this pint, I mean point, the land started to seem like a safe haven, wonderfully comfortable, and somewhere I didn't want to leave, mainly because the rain was pelting like steroids outside, and I wasn't keen on Singapore's A380 seats, because I'd tried the old ones before, and they'd beaten all the enthusiasm out of me. And the Chris Fowler Lounge is a modern and contemporary space, albeit with a heaviness of the bar stools once the early morning Australian cocktail crowd had gone. Still, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning how to dance in the rain and get out of the lounge and how to dance to the gate via the Singapore Airlines food street next door where the proletariat eat. And there I go, heading up to the gate, and thankfully there is priority boarding, and I managed to get to my A380 where I left it earlier, having a wash in the rain. Singapore Airlines A380s have been refurnished over the past couple of years. They were getting decidedly elderly, and if you've stuck with me over the past 30 years while I've reviewed airlines, you may remember I was at Toulouse when Singapore Airlines took ownership of the first A380. Now business class is completely overhauled with the latest cutting edge seats. On the upper deck, you'll find 82 business class seats in a one-to-one layout. The molded carbon fiber shell isn't just eye-catching, it's much lighter and allows passengers to enjoy much greater space within the seat, according to the airline. There's hand-stitched purple leather by Poltro Fro, a lightened motif and dashes of orange. They accentuate the appearance of luxury. Uh, there's a separate smaller business class cabin at the back and then I had a wander through the cheaper seats below to see what economy was like. Totally different to business class of course, which is quite sophisticated up here. And then you descend down the spiral staircase. And here in economy, there's a 343 layout. However, Economy had a revamp last year and now there's a new 11-inch TV screen, USB power ports and a new much more comfortable screen. There are 343 Economy seats on the A380. It's a big bird indeed, but Economy has got a seat pitch of 32 inches, that's 81 centimeters in new money, and a width of 19 inches. It's much better in premium economy, the halfway house for those who count the pennies but like to be able to get out of their seat when they want to spend a penny. 38 inches of pitch, 18 inches of width, 242 layout and a 13 inch monitor, plus the same headphones as in business. Up those stairs at the front to my natural environment, business class. And you know what? It really works. A business class cabin could appear like a backpacker's dormitory, but in context, it really does actually function. There's a smaller business class cabin at the back of the A380, and then a little bit of privacy here, but also none of the bling of, say, some of the golf carriers like Emirates, alas, no bar or sociable area, however. Our cabin crew, if you call assistance, we wish you a pleasant flight. It is normal for the bank to not fully inflate. There are We remind you that this is a non smoking flight. Smoking, including the charging. Oh, that's better. Pre-flight champers, but in a toothpaste glass. Oh, dear me. One mark less for that. Now, great to see the full menus are back on Singapore Airlines. My flights in the COVID era sorely missed these, although goodness knows what horrors are being thawed in the galley for first dinner and then second supper. Well, I know what horrors they are because I've seen the preview online and that's why I've booked the cook after taking one look at the Navaravin lamb with placenta medley on a Larachin style pureed peas in biryani. Mind you, I wanted to try some of these Singapore specialities I got to know so well when I was in the Lion Cities.
so just like most frequent flyers i steered clear of the eggs and chicken sausage which can never be done well on an aircraft and asked the crew for a soon heck bang with an extra chock me plus another glass of champers for takeoff the loquacious crew stopped by for a chat en route and then handed me a very decent glass of Piper Heidsack 2012 in a plastic glass. Oz Clark will be turning in his grave, except he doesn't have one yet, as his signs were definitely vital when he wrote the reviews in the in-flight drinking instruction manual. The familiar music is playing of those quad Rolls-Royce Trent 900s as we rise out over Changi and circle over the Singapore Strait and head northwest for Blighty. It was then time for a Sisyphean task that was my challenge of the day. Now I'm sure you remember from Homer's Iliad, this is a task that's pointless, fruitless and a totally unrewarding task. And the task I've been sent after the previous video was to work my way through the cocktail list. However, Sisyphean describes a task that's impossible to complete. It refers to the punishment that Sisyphean received in the underworld where he's forced to roll a boulder up a hill repeatedly for eternity. Now he chained up death so no one died, but after a few hours drinking in the lounge and no sleep for 60 hours, I gave up on that hope and just launched myself down the slope of implausible Singaporean cuisine for breakfast. My mind had started to boggle on all four cylinders already, but now gave up the boggle faced with the nonsense of oversized juicy wontons and instead wanted the finest wines known to humanity and I wanted them now. Now, Soon Heckback Chok Mi Soup is really quite special. It originates from a hawker stall on the island by Soon Heck, tucked away at the intersection of Neil Road and Kiong Siak in Singapore, just a bit down from Raffles Quay. All the expats head here because the broth isn't clear. Instead, the hawker here has created thick broth, which you can liven up by popping in the peppers. It's in effect a minced pork noodle soup with thin egg noodles and meatballs and those wonderful juicy wontons. And it goes wonderfully with a Swiss croissant. Singapore is nothing but a melting pot and it leaves chicken sausages rolling in the dust of cuisine from the island as we wave goodbye to the Lion City and head over to I poo. There are decent noise reducing headphones on board and the 18 inch high definition touchscreen is powered by Panasonic's EX3 system which is very good indeed. Also a great remote to control the large high definition screen which is sharp and really clear. Now the headphones are a bit unusual in that they also have a small volume control on the headset themselves and they come with a small pouch with extra ear covers. There's a great mattress topper for the seat, a couple of pillows and even a duvet. And finally, at last, I got some sleep. Woke up over India, heading for Bombay. Checked out the bathrooms, which were really rather spartan. Alas, no amenity kits loaded on the flight, which is pretty poor form. I know they aren't loaded on the, what Singapore Airlines regard as short regional flights, so the ones of only eight hours, but it would have been good of Singapore Airlines to include some. Cabin's in darkness, but it's a daytime flight, so many passengers were wide awake and going through the film selection on board, which has been noticeably increased since COVID days and has got quite a few blockbusters.
Time to check out the Wi-Fi, and Singapore Airlines are now offering unlimited free Wi-Fi to all passengers in business class, which is vastly better than the previous limit of only 100 megabytes, which was just about good enough for uh, sending a few messages or emails, but not for browsing the web. Indeed, you can now get free Wi-Fi back in the cheap seats as well now, so long as you're a Chris Flyer member, and quite a lot of people seem to be using it, and that causes a problem. Bandwidth in flight continues to remain limited, and the more people use it, the lower the speeds. It was okay, but nowhere near as fast as I've had on other flights on Singapore Airlines. The business class seat reclines into a fully flat bed 76 inches long. Now that is a shorter bed compared to some other airlines and if you're over 6 foot tall, like me, it is a problem as you end up with your feet wedged down the tunnel ahead of you. The bed surface is also quite hard even after the mattress topper is on and having a topper with more padding might actually be a better idea. At least the crew were pretty attentive and when they saw I was awake, immediately offered snacks as it would be at least a couple of hours before lunch was ready. Snacks are pretty basic, but at least there's some good slurpy soup. This is a vegetarian rice noodles with lettuce, black mushrooms and Chinese greens. There's a light for attracting attention when it's time for breakfast cocktails as I continued with the challenge of working my way through the cocktail list, all nicely illuminated by the reading light. Kicked off with a Cuba Libra, that's basically just a rum and coke which was perfectly mixed. There are yet more lights around the seat with a separate light to illuminate the cocktail tray and a third night light for early morning drinking. Now with perfect timing, I'd just about finished the first cocktail and I found that resisting the crew who were keen to offer top-ups was just exhausting. So who am I to say no considering it's going to be pretty cold when I land in London? And then, it really was time for dinner, again. Options for dinner then included braised beef short rib vinegar, a seafood arabatia with orange chonette, black bean chicken and a braised fish maw, sea cucumber, dried oyster scallops and roast pork. Yum! Time to wheel out that great big dinner tray that's right in front of me and fold it out. And then the drinks trolley comes around again. Seems to be appearing by my seat every 15 minutes or so. Now it's great to see that Singapore chicken satay is back on the menu. These bit the dust at the height of COVID, but are back on again. And nothing says Singapore more than a bit of a chicken on a stick with cucumber and slathered in peanut sauce, all mixed down with a Bloody Mary. Great to see garlic bread back on the menu and also a packet of mini easy chicken from Bi Cheng Hung. This is bakwa, Chinese salty sweet dried meat similar to jerky and an absolute must have for Chinese New Year. But all of that is to come after the Fei Chai Yu Shong, that's Chinese New Year salad with a lightly pickled salmon and sour plum sauce. Hmm, lightly pickled, rather like the customers really. Alas, it seems to have been created by a chef who has never really seen salmon before and asked ChatGBT for a recipe instead. The Fei Kai Hu Sheng, the Chinese New Year salad, was fantastic as well. It's also known as Prosperity Salad, which is traditionally created by tossers with big bowls to usher in a year of abundance, wealth and longevity. Salad is fantastic and goes well with the Dandelion Chardonnay from the Adelaide Hills. This is a stunning Chardonnay from the Dandelion Vineyards using fruit from a vineyard in the heart of Adelaide Hills. 
It's crisp, citrusy and minerally with a lovely white peach and nectarine fruit on a crunchy, racy palate. And it is genuinely, truly delicious. Next up, as we head over Iraq, I've got something a little bit special. Now, Book the Cook is a special service offered by Singapore Airlines for passengers flying in business class out of Singapore. And they've got all sorts of great meals in there. They've got some fantastic steaks, loads of good curries, and right at the bottom of the menu, a grilled Angus beef burger. This is what it's all about and what I've made a special journey for. It's a cheeseburger on a plane. But this isn't any cheeseburger. It's a Singapore Airlines special a Book the Cook cheeseburger with mushrooms and caramelised onions. All washed down with a Chateron Trebuchet a Poulie Fousier Grande Vine de Bourgogne. Uh, it's a white wine made from Chardonnay grapes, very buttery and complex. The wine offers an amazing purity of fruit with enticing aromas of citrus, lemon and grapefruit supported by a mineral character, toasty notes and roasted almonds. It's a rich and generous palate wine with great aromic precision and beautiful acidity in the finish and about 15 quid down Tesco's. Now the trolley came around again and I went for both desserts. I went for cheesecake a la banana. It's a bit of an acquired taste, but I do love the butter crumble that comes with it. And also the cheese platter, that's got Tete de Moine, Brie and Morbido Rosso. Great cheeses and they go very, very well with all the accoutrements on the plate. Next up, I tried the 2016 Chateau Peur La Tour Bordeaux. It comes from a small vineyard near Salbif in France with the ancient terroir of limestone, clay and gravel. It's in effect a rich velvety Merlot with some added complexity of spicy oak. Well over Burgerland now and passing Frankfurters and Hamburgers on the starboard wing as we overfly Germany en route to the UK. Had to continue my hard work on the cocktail list and work my way through a screwdriver with vodka and orange juice. And at that point I discovered there was a special cocktail cabinet you can keep them in. So you can keep your cocktail upright while we're landing. Now the crew had obviously got me worked out by that point and realized I was presenting myself as more of a lovable reprobate rather than a spirit of corruption and offered yet more cocktails. Finally found where the amenity kits were kept. They're kept in the bathrooms on the Singapore A380. Unfortunately, that's where you have to go rather than getting an amenity kit at your seat. So there we go, that's the A380 in business class. Free flowing cocktail thanks to Singapore Airlines and really a very enjoyable way of getting from one side of the planet to the other. Now amongst that nice set of buttons we've got there, we've got a cocktail button and we've also got a do not disturb button. Upon 
pontificated over the menu, and as we headed on to finals, I went for a grand pineapple daiquiri to complete the set of cocktails. It's got rum, orange liqueur, and of course, pineapple juice. On finals now, heading into Heathrow, looks say a little bit cold and frosty below. Now there's a pretty decent selection of films on board, particularly if you've got a heavy bent towards art house Asian cinema or Hollywood blockbusters of a couple of years back. Current hits, well, they're a little bit more few and far between, and there isn't that much from the UK. TV series, on the other hand, lean heavily towards the US, with just a few random episodes of each one loaded. It's a little bit of a random potpourri. So there you have it, that's the Singapore Airlines A380 in business class, which I endured as stoically as I possibly could do, especially for your delight and entertainment. Now, it's got to be said, Singapore Airlines hasn't emerged from the pandemic unscathed. The Airbus A380 fleet retirement has been accelerated, so they've got much fewer planes, and they've also made some cuts to the service, and those which took place in COVID haven't been reversed. One example of that is hot towels. They were previously offered in all cabins and they're now a distant, fond memory. But those minor touches aside, Singapore Airlines does a fabulous job with the core product. The upper deck of the Airbus A380 still feels well, really quite spacious, despite the narrower width. The new Airbus A380 business class seat is well suited for both lounging and sleeping, 
The full in-flight menu is back with really delicious options. There's free and unlimited Wi-Fi now, decent in-flight entertainment, a really big screen, great wines, and as I might have mentioned, there's a very, very good cocktail list. Well, there we go. We've made it all the way through from Sydney to Brisbane to Singapore and finally to a very chilly London Heathrow where it's currently one degree. And right now, I need some sleep. So as I head on the train out of Heathrow, and then go out to the northeast, I get a chance to compare the seats of the trains and the planes. And I really wish I was back on Singapore Airlines A380.